but it's beautiful to be able to be that support and be that role model for that next generation coming through. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, once you've had your time, why wouldn't you want someone else to experience that elation or it could just be one phone call that might make a difference? I remember taking that mindset into my behaviour after sort of International Women's Day yeah. a good few years ago. And one of the sort of mission statements was reaching out to another woman, you know, elevate, support. And I just haven't forgotten it. I just feel that's, that's what you should do. And, and not wait, and not always no. wait for someone to say help or that they're in the, you know, the doldrums, that you actually inter intervene or offer assistance just for the hell of it. Because when you do that, sometimes it unlocks that person to think deeper about what they do actually need and what they want. Mm. And that was the same with, with Kat, you know, it was just, yeah, it was a, a good time to, to help, offer help. To step in. Yeah, to step in. So actually yesterday marked a year to go until Paris. <laughs> how, <beaming> smile. <laughs> how are you feeling at a year to go? Just excited. For me, it's never just a new year. It's an Olympic year. You made me it like is, I was grin from <laughs> ear to ear. It is that. It's just like, okay, who are going to be the next gen? That next gen, what are they going to offer up? What treats are they going to delight us with? What stories are going to get told? And uh, I'm always, you know, excited. Just beaming. New talent on the block. Yeah. Who are we looking out for? Well, let's see who's fit, because that's the thing. Talent only goes so far. It's who can manage themselves during that pressure. So from an athletic point of view, we've got an abundance of middle distance athletes right now that are have obviously got medals, mm. but new ones just under the, you know, the periphery that are ex waiting to explode, i.e. Gemma Rikis of this world. You know, she's a really good 8, 1500 meter runner. She's had championship experience. She's had a lot of injuries, um, really bad COVID attack, which hampered her progression a little bit. Recently just tough. changed her coach, but she had a great race the other week at uh, the London Diamond League. And she looks like she's back. Could she join the likes of uh, Keely Hodgkinson and Laura Muir and pick up a medal at the, the Olympics? I would love that. You give me goosebumps. <laughs> I can't wait. It's like three weeks, three and a half weeks of just incredible sport. But on that, let's transition into your career now. You've been retired for quite a while <laughs> in the athletic domain. Yeah. <laughs> what has been your most fulfilling physical challenge? Ooh. Do you still get a kick of doing yeah. physical mind mapping tasks? Do you know something? And I'm going to tell you exactly what that was. Okay. So during lockdown, um, we managed to get um, a show off the ground commissioned and it was called Don't Rock the Boat. Yes. And it was two teams that had to technically race against each other. Red team, uh, blue team. I remember this. Yeah. And so we rode from Cornwall up to Scotland. That is disgusting. Open water. That is horrific. It, it was horrific. And I kid you not, I take on these challenges thinking, okay, it's not really too bad. Yeah. You know, I, I pick up the technique, okay. But it's so much more than the physical doing. Yeah, again, having to support other members of the crew that aren't up to the task physically or mentally. So you're doing the lion's share of the work. You're now a coach. Yeah, I'm coach, I'm mentor, <laughs> mentor. I'm mommy. Psy psychologist. <laughs> psychologist. <laughs> but also having to do the rowing. Man, I cannot begin to tell you when you've got novices rowing in open water, you know, the waves are yay high. You're rowing through the night. Wow. Yeah, 20 hours of rowing in shifts between the crews. <laughs> if I read the small print, and the detail of what the task was, I may have opted out. Yeah. However, I did it, conquered the open waters, 
and actually feel like you said just like jeez who knew you could do that girl i actually yeah i i it doesn't sound doable that's the thing about some of these challenges right yeah. i feel like they're just getting more and more ridiculous yeah because people i've tried are... rowing up the thames once and i was like hats off helen glover because that was hard i ended up sunbathing <laughs> <laughs> mm, why am I not surprised? <laughs> Kicking back. Well, this is what we had on the show. Ch Chatting to the captain. Yeah, had their cameras, their phone cameras, and they were like, guys, you're supposed to be rowing. Oh, they were stargazing because absolutely there were moments when the sea was calm, you look skyward, yeah. and you've got the beautiful constellation, or you see a shooting star. Do you still get a kick out of training? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm still in beast mode. I love lie. that. Beast I, mode. I, yeah, I'm still in beast God, mode. what does beast <laughs> mode look like for Denise Lewis? Because, I mean, the first thing you said when we arrived at the bottom of Primrose Hill was, let's go up it. Yeah. And there was there was the, the was high pace. knee. Yeah, 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 yeah the bit of pace. Yeah, I like that. I'm a gym bunny. I love going to the gym. I, I do a lot of um, hybrid sessions. Yeah. I just mix it up. Yeah. But I don't lift heavy weights, but I do a little bit of barbells. I am circuits i did this one session with my pt who is amazing and the reason i have a pt yeah is so i don't have to think oh nice yeah, yeah. she just barks instructions at me it's all online so it's virtual oh, online yeah. so just do it at home yeah do it at home okay great nice and easy um is a drumming session have you ever had those weighted drumsticks no it's amazing. It's a game changer. Weighted drumsticks. Yeah. So like physical, like so actual the, drums. Actually, so it's not drums. The, you use the sticks and you use a cushion and you bash the hell out of the, the cushion. No way. But you do um, like a burpee, like four, four hits to the cushion into a burpee. Yeah. Repeat, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Then you do like uh, shuffles, three shuffles, burpee, drum again. Yeah. You dovetail that with some shadow boxing as well. Very cool. It's a wicked session. That sounds great. So heart rate is nice and high, 665 beats. How uh, long we're we talking? 40 minutes. Nice, yeah, just bang it out. Yeah, bang it out. I think that's the thing. People make the gym, fitness, wellness, unaccessible by thinking you need to do an hour in the no. gym. Now, mum, four children. Oh gosh. Incredible. Tiring. <laughs> How do you find the balance to find the time for you to get that training in? And how important is it for you mentally to be the best mum? Uh, I don't know. The best mum, that terminology, I think you're as good as you, you're trying to be the best you can be. I don't know whether I've ever hit those heights, but um, I I'm, mean, passionate. I'm passionate about trying to, to be that all encompassing but knowing that you can't you get things wrong you make mistakes your tolerance isn't always high and hence why going to the gym in the morning for me yeah is essential it starts my day it gives me energy and by the time sort of eight eight o'clock in the evening rolls around when they've just literally bled me dry <laughs> from demands <laughs> I, I can just sit back and go, you know, I've completed my tasks, got my heart rate up, done my exercise, I can give them what they need, cook, clean up, and the rest of the evening's mine. Rockstar mum. Rockstar mum.